Alright, this is a brief introduction to uh, Blender. I'm going to be using 2.8 Beta. It's still in Beta as the time of this recording of the video in early June. Um, I believe it's going to be released sometime later this year, maybe August, but that'll happen when it happens. So, get into the page, you can find the download, and then make sure you download the right version. Flicking over to Blender itself, because I've already downloaded and installed this, and I will assume that you're capable of doing the same yourself. Um, so we here have interest screen, we'll click on to get rid of it. The first project I'm going to do is really just an introduction to get you used to adding objects and building a scene and that sort of stuff. And I'll go through the various screens in the scene itself as well. So in the centre here, the most obvious thing is this sort of 3D perspective view to see your scene. Um, I'm holding down the middle mouse button to rotate back and forth. Um, I've got a camera oops, um, that'll record the scene a light to illuminate it, and an object to actually see. If I tap F12, I will do a test render, and it should pop up with what the camera sees. And there, in the slightly shaded background, you can see a white square or the grey square. So, this is going to be built up over stages, so we'll move through the things fairly quickly and easily in a group of successive videos. The first one is attempt to go with some of the basic selection tools. A is to select everything. A simple right, left click, sorry. Left click will select whatever object you want, such as the light. This context down the side changes as based on what you're seeing. But anyhow, getting slightly ahead of myself here. The first up is the, so talked about the center screen. If that needs to be changed, you've got all these other screen options here, but I'm not going to worry about them because Blender's done a great job of actually setting up different layouts so that you can focus on the part you want to do. I'll get to layouts later because at this stage it just will complicate matters. Down the bottom is the timeline for animating. Up here we have the outliner, which outlines all the objects in the scene, including cameras and lights. Down the bottom we have uh, various properties windows. You'll see a whole range of little tabs down the side. If you hover over them, you should get a little bit of data about them from the render engine being used, the size of the renders and all this sort of stuff. But going back to the object, that gives us the basic information of where it is. So what I'm going to do is shift A to add. You can also go to this menu up the top here and add various meshes. What I'm going to try and build is a simple stack of shapes. So we've already got a cube in the center. I'm going to add the two types of sphere, UV and ICO. A cylinder, a cone, a torus, or a donut, and a monkey. So, selecting the first one, it has been added. You can't see it because it's not, it's outlined right in the center here. You can just see the outline of it, but it's hidden inside the cube. We'll use the little widget in the corner. Let's, let's click on the D. Oh no, that's the rotate one. We should be able to then just grab it to move the object. You can see it there. Shift A to add the next object, being the icosphere, and again, G for grabbing, and I'll just move these things out so you can see them all before we actually start building it. And, you know, yeah. So G for grab. Grab gets a little more complicated because you can actually control which way it grabs, so hitting G for grab, if I go Z, it just locks it into the Z axis, up and down. Um, grab, G for grab, X, X axis, or Y axis. If I go Shift Z, it moves it anywhere on that X, Y plane. So Shift basically translates as not. If I don't like where um, I'm doing something to it, and I go, oh, I didn't want that, um, how do I stop it? Just a simple right click will basically cancel what you're doing. So left click to select or confirm, right click to cancel. The middle mouse button is actually kind of useful because it allows you to rotate your view and move around, which I already mentioned at the start of this video. Adding the last object of my list, which is the monkey head, because everybody needs a test object, and this is Susan the Glorious Monkey. Um, yeah, everybody needs one. So what I need to do is basically combine these objects into a stack. So the easiest way here is to select the single object and then just manipulate it using the grab tools, so G for grab to move it around. To make things a little easier for yourself, 
it's usually a good idea to lock it in a particular direction first. So if I want to move it along the x-axis so it lines up there, so I can see that line up along the y, grab y-axis to get it sitting roughly where things should be, and use the rotation to confirm that, and then grab in the z direction to make a vertical stack. Grabbing the monkey, I'm just going to grab z and put the thing on its head. And so here I'm just trying to line all these objects up vertically. Where they've moved off line, you should be able to get them back into position. Now, the easiest way to do this is to look from above. So we can try and rotate like this and line things up, which kind of gets a bit tricky. Or you can press 7 on the number pad. So I'm going to grab and just slide it so it lines up and then rotate down. And I can just grab in the Z direction and slide it up a little. Now, sometimes you won't need to do that. You can just sort of guesstimate and it should sit about right. And that will be fine. Oh, perfect. So here I've got a stack. Now, the camera itself, if I press 0 on the number pad, we'll see what the camera sees. That's a really bad shot. So I'm going to tap 0 again to get out of this mode. And I'm going to have to move this camera back. So what I'm going to try and do is make sure the very front of the camera is just a straight line. Because that way, when I grab it and pull it back, it should line up on what I'm looking at. I say should, I'm hoping for the best here. Pressing 0 again to check it. Obviously it hasn't lined up. This is also really good for composition, so I can just select the object and move the mouse around to get a good composition. So sticking to the rule of thirds, one, two, so in that third, that should be pretty good. Then F12 to render, as I mentioned right at the start, and we have a stack of shapes. Make sure you save this render, so that you've got proof of what you've been doing. So save as and then save it somewhere. So let's, I usually dump all my stuff on the desktop and then put it somewhere useful. So, shape stack. And just go save. It's all in black and white for the moment. And once we've saved this render, and so this is our render result, we should be able to tap escape and get out of it. And that's a quick introduction to, to Blender and dealing with objects and moving things through physical space. There are a few more details to, about it. Um, there's a couple of nice little tricks, but with what you're doing, these four menus here, hidden in this slightly lower toolbar, will actually give you access to a lot of different features about what you're dealing with. And there's also these other widgets and controls across the top. So moving, making things really simple is the transform, move, rotate and scale. So transform gives you the widget here, and you can see the various controls. So the circular lines are the rotate. The little squares are the scale, so I can distort and scale and that sort of stuff. And the arrows are the move. Or if you want to focus in on just doing one particular thing, you can go for the move options, which of course the shortcut key is G for grab. You can go for the rotate options, uh, the shortcut key is R for rotate. And the scale options, the shortcut key being S for scale. Uh, the other ones I'm not going to worry about later, but I'm just covering the really basic features. The other icon up the top, these two here, as you switch between them, this is the general selection box. So I can use a box to select everything like you would with a standard mouse cursor, hovering over in Windows. Uh, the cursor replaces and places the 3D cursor. This is the red and white ringed thing. This is where the objects get placed when you add them. So if I go Shift A to add, then I add an icosphere, it'll appear there where that cursor is, and I'll press X to delete that. You do need to confirm when you select stuff. So here it's got OK to can delete. You go, oh, yep, cool, click, done. Because I haven't selected anything, nothing should disappear. Um, the other controls that you'll commonly find yourself using is holding down Shift in the middle mouse button to move around. You can roll in and out for your zoom. Or, no, that doesn't work anymore. So, yeah, that should be enough for now.